amigos y amigas. Javier here for Hum of the Earth. Signing in from the city of Merida, where I'm currently residing. Specifically, I live close to Plaza Las Americas. But one place that I often heard of on Facebook when I uh, was asking people about good place to live in Merida, people often answered Francisco de Montejo, which is a neighborhood in the northern part of the city. And that is where we are today. When I was asking on Facebook for places to stay, I also had the caveat of somewhere that's somewhat safe and that has good, cheap food. And people really accentuated the fact that Francisco de Monteo had good cheap food, so I'm excited to try some of that today. And at the same time, we're just going to uh, explore the, the neighborhood in general here. But I am already getting hungry, so let's see if we can't uh, get a good local recommendation. Hola. Uh, un lugar uh, buen y barato para comer? Uy, no sé, acá enfrente venden comida, pero no sabría decir. Mira. Aquí. Ahí venden comida. ¿Y eh, tú le recomiende? Sí. Es bueno. Sí, está bueno. Ok. Ok. Gracias. Alright, so this place says they are light and gourmet, delicious, not sure what Saridab is, and different. And it's not too expensive, let's check it out. Out of here just in time. Like seven people walked in right after me. Must be a popular spot. But there's no sit-in room, so let's see if we can find a nice place to eat. And 
and here it is the pechuga picadillo which is like chicken mixed up with peppers tomatoes onions and other spices super delicious maybe a tad salty for me but still great some platanos fried bananas and some delicious rice with a kind of bean paste which is also flavored with spices pretty delicious and for a pretty reasonable price of 85 pesos which is about 425 us so maybe on the high end for comida economica but on the low end for a restaurant so pretty happy with that and of course as is the case with most mexican meals you're given some tortillas so that you can fuse all the flavors together <clears throat> so just sitting here all of a sudden my phone started going off which it doesn't usually when I'm not at home because I don't have a data plan. But sure enough, there's Wi-Fi here in this little park. Merida is a pretty connected city. And potatoes <clears throat> and olives, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised because that was the logo of the restaurant after all but that is not a very common component in Mexican cuisine but it works well here looks like they're prepping for some kind of market this weekend selling clothes <clears throat> So that was really good, but also really heavy, a lot of food. I had the option of getting a half portion for 65 pesos, so for 25 peso, 20 pesos less, so a dollar less, but that just didn't seem like a very good deal. So I had to go for the, the full portion. I'm now looking for some kind of caffeinated beverage to bring the energy back up here so we can check out some more of these sites in Francisco de Montejo. Thankfully that's never too hard to find. You just look up and above the trees and buildings you will see an OXO which is Mexico's equivalent of the 7-Eleven. Best part about Oxos is that it is always freezing cold in here. So you see some people just sticking around a little while longer. Any uh, camera here? <laughs> can see. Vente. Vente uno. No, no, así está bien. Vente. Okay. Gracias. Gracias.
Since the second half of the 20th century, Merida has been growing enormously to the north and west. The north is the area which has seen the greatest commercial growth, and it is here where you will find the newer homes, shopping malls, hospitals, department stores, private schools, and franchises from all over the world, and car dealerships. Driving north on Prolongacion de Montejo from the center of the city can induce culture shock to the uninitiated, as at times you might forget you're in Mexico and not the United States. In the 1990s, in the northwest, Francisco de Montejo saw 40,000 homes built. This new development attracted new residents from other parts of Mexico, especially Mexico City. To this day, few native Yucatecans live in this area, as it is inhabited mostly by Los Huaches, the somewhat derogatory name Yucatecans have for the people of Mexico City and from parts of central Mexico. Today, the Fraccionamento of Francisco de Montejo is home to more people than the populations of Valladolid and Tizimin. So, so far it looks like a pretty typical neighborhood of Merida. People seem friendly. I've seen a few gringos. And uh, the local mestizos were didn't seem off put by their presence. That's good. People living in harmony. So that's something that you would not see in the Canada or US. This tree would have been cut down a long time ago. Um, but that is not the case here. See, they just cut off the parts that are going to make it topple over and let it continue to grow. And that's because since Mayan times, these trees here were believed to be sacred. Since they... Maybe this just fell off and then they cut it. Yeah, it kind of looks like it just fell off actually. Anyways, yeah, these were considered sacred because they were so big and they felt like it was connecting them to gods. So even to this day, because this area still has, I mean, this area of Mexico in general, like the Yucatan Peninsula, still has a lot of people of Mayan descent. Um, as to not, I guess, offend or upset anybody, these trees don't get cut down no matter where they are in the city. They do provide some nice shade. Well, as advertised, <clears throat> There is a lot of places to eat in Francisco Monteo. There's several small restaurants that seem pretty well priced on every street it seems. As well as laundry services. Hairdressers suppose it makes sense that there's a lot of restaurants and service-oriented businesses because it's a bit of a higher-end neighborhood so people can afford to not cook their own food and hence why because of all the food places why it attracts 
foreign expats and visitors, snowbirds from the Canada and the US who want to spend the winter in Mexico. So here's one of Francisco de Montejo's notable features here is the Paseo Verde which is a long park and walking slash biking trails that go from the very north of the neighborhood all the way to the well even past south of it it actually spans the entirety of the north east quadrant of the city so that's pretty cool and along the way there's some structures and probably some workout equipment as well and i also remember seeing another park on the map here auditorium here which means i guess there's probably some free musical slash dancing events here during regular times of course i imagine Unfortunately, that park is on the other side of the highway, so we'll not be getting to it. There's no real crossing for pedestrians. And it looks like there's more in store for Francisco de Montejo. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this uh, neighborhood here. I tried to research it more, but it's kind of hard to research it because the man who it's named after was one of the first political leaders of the Yucatan. So when you research Francisco de Monteo, it's hard to just research the neighborhood. But even that, that yeah, there isn't <laughs> going to find too much online about it. Um, but yeah, it seems like a um, a pretty good neighborhood. Definitely wouldn't mind living here. Who knows if I return to Merida in the future, this could be a spot. But like for like I mentioned, for now I have another apartment in Merida because I'm going to be in the city for a few months exploring checking out the sites meeting some cool f folks some ruins cenotes historical parts of the city etc so yeah, a bunch more videos of Merida on this channel. There'll be a link in the description to a playlist with all those videos of Eastern Mexico in 2021. You'll also find a playlist of the first time I was in Mexico or traveling through Mexico, through the Western and central part of the country on a bicycle. So playlist for that as well in the description below the video. That was part of a larger trip bicycling through Latin America. I've also bicycled through Eastern Africa and Eastern Europe. And you can find playlists for all the countries that I've visited available on this same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. And if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do. I have that available over my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, 
where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures in Merida and beyond, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.